It's crazy how good Google's phones are, and yet nobody really knows about them. Their own marketing ads even start out by saying, did you know Google makes a phone? Cue the brand new Google Pixel 7 Pro, being hands down the best smartphone Google has ever made. The only thing is, it comes with little fanfare as compared to when the Google Pixel 6 Pro came out, and why is that? So here's everything that you need to know about Google's newest flagship, the Google Pixel 7 Pro. Let's get started. So first, let's go over a really quick unboxing. We're first greeted to an Apple-like vibe here with a white minimal box that features the iconic Google G alongside Pixel 7 Pro branding with a clear image of our slightly redesigned Pixel phone in this awesome snow color, which is basically white, but you can also pick it up in your choice of Obsidian or Hazel and comes with a baseline storage of 128 gigabytes with an MSRP of $899, but you can commonly find it on sale or at a discount. Discount. So it definitely does carry a flagship price tag. You can configure your all new Google Pixel 7 Pro up to a whopping 512 gigabytes, but you'll have to fork up an additional $200 for that luxury. Anyway, on our sides, we have Google and Pixel 7 Pro branding, and on the back side, we see hashtag Team Pixel along with these pull tabs, similar to the ones found on iPhone boxes. So remove those, lift open the lid, and the very first thing you'll see is our new Pixel 7 Pro front and center. We set that off to the side for now and find that we also get a small piece of paper that includes links for your quick start guide and warranty information, as well as a SIM ejection tool, which differs from Apple's iPhone 14s since those exclusively feature a digital SIM, at least that's the case here in the States. Additionally, we feature our USB-C to USB-C cable used to charge and sync our device, as well as a quick switch adapter that allows users brand new to the Google family to easily move their information over into a new Pixel device. Note that the 30 watt USB-C power adapter is absent and is sold separately. Google most definitely stole this move from Apple, best believe it. So now, finally, let's head back to our shiny new device, remove the protective film shrouding our massive 6.7 inch QHD Plus display, and turn that sucker on for the first time so we can get it set up and ready to rock and roll. So Google's Pixel 6 Pro, when it was released, was a massive overhaul versus its predecessor, the Google Pixel 5, and thus was widely acclaimed and had a ton of buzz surrounding its release. Apple Sheep, it's synonymous kind of to when the iPhone 10 was released. When it was released, it was a massive overhaul from the prior iPhone 7 line with the home buttons. And so you can imagine that the 10s received little attention and certainly didn't come with the pizzazz that the iPhone 10 did. It's the exact same story here with the Google Pixel line. The new Google Pixel 7 Pro expands on what makes the Google Pixel 6 Pro so great in the first place. As they say, don't fix it if it ain't broken. And that's why the Pixel 7 Pro, design-wise, looks extremely similar to the Pixel 6 Pro, all but for a few key details. The design is familiar but refined. Google has retained that camera strip array, which before it was this sort of visor, but now it's more of this metal strip made of recycled aluminum, and it seamlessly blends in with the aluminum surrounding here on the cameras. I think the effect is very neat and is super appealing to the eyes, at least in my opinion. It's a small shift, but those small attention to details is what truly makes the Pixel 7 Pro appear more refined with just a few tweaks here and there while still retaining its identity. The backside that's not aluminum, however, is still glass, and our front glass panel still curves outwards there at the ends, creating a very nice visual that I quite enjoy. Some people don't like the curves on the glass at the edges. I do. You see? It's all up to preference. It's also IP68 rated for occasional spills, drinks, or in the event you're taking a phone call outside while it's pouring, then your Google phone should be okay. Don't worry, it will be just fine. However, do be warned, some users have expressed how the aluminum strip can show some wear and tear over time, similar to how the back of iPod touches from back in the day showed scratches almost instantly. But the big difference is that this isn't stainless steel, it's aluminum, so it should hold up much better. I can't tell if the weathered and scratched up aluminum strip would look ugly and gross, or if it would look dope. Kinda like the Pixel has a story of its own to tell of the endless adventures it's been on with you. Only time will tell. 
This phone internally is running on the second generation of Google's in-house processor called the Tensor G2. Now honestly, I thought it was pretty bold for Google to want to rival Apple in a way, because you know, Apple also has their very own silicon with the likes of their M-series chips and the A-series Bionic chips for their iPhones. They could have easily knocked on the door from the likes of the big chip players like Qualcomm, but Google thought differently. The reality though is that the Tensor G2 is a very capable chip and behaves extremely similar to any other Android device, including the G1 from the prior iteration. There's no lag while browsing the user interface, everything is just so fluid and clean, but I did notice that, right out of the box, the Google Pixel 7 by default is set to 1080p, so I highly advise you go into settings and change that to the fuller 1440p QHD Plus resolution, as honestly it had a negligible impact on battery at least from my own experience don't worry i'll discuss battery life later on in the review but how much better is the tensor g2 versus the prior in-house chip well i ran some geekbench and it turns out it's a very small albeit present increase to performance that only makes the phone snappier on single core they basically are the same with the pixel 7 pro edging out ever so slightly ahead by only six points coming in at 1058 but on multi-core is where we begin to notice stronger gains with the prior pixel 6 pro scoring 2917 for multi while the newer pixel 7 pro comes in at a more reasonable 3256 proving that the g2 is a step above the prior g1 although not by drastic margins so don't expect performance to be leaps and bounds above the Pixel 6 Pro. In short, it's packed with power, but it's the behind the scenes stuff, including software, that makes it shine. For example, over on the Recorder app, the Google Phone still to this day, in my opinion, has the best voice to text of any smartphone I've ever tried. It's not always 100% accurate, but I'd say it gets about 95% of what you're saying down to a T. It's really great, and that's just one of the many great software features Pixel phones are acclaimed for. There's also the Magic Eraser that is huge in their marketing, and the new Unblur feature that can be useful in certain situations. The display measures 6.7 inches across the diagonal, and it's got a 3120 by 1440 pixel resolution. That is unchanged from the Pixel 6 Pro. It's exactly the same. The display looks gorgeous and has bold and punchy colors. It has a distinct look to it. I really can't describe it, but it certainly looks different from an iPhone display, and I mean that in a good way. It could be the colors, could also be the nice curved edges that make this phone stand out and look even more pristine. The display is large enough to enjoy big screen gaming on games like Clash Royale or Pokemon Go, which are some of my personal favorites, and watching content like from YouTube or Netflix on this display is a pure delight. It being such a large display though means that those with small hands may find handling this phone a bit cumbersome at times, especially when trying to one hand a text message. Outdoors is where the Pixel 7 Pro shines above its predecessor with it being able to reach a maximum peak brightness of up to an astonishing 1400 nits. This is a stark contrast versus the peak 800 nits of the prior Pixel 6 Pro. Now, let's talk about those cameras because Google is known for having excellent hardware in terms of cameras on their smartphones, but also their software is top tier and definitely has a very iconic Google phone look to their pictures. Videos and photographs taken on the Pixel 7 Pro seem to pop out at you and seem very real to life. The Pixel 7 Pro's impressive 50 megapixel main camera takes superb and ultra high quality photographs. It has excellent dynamic range and the colors are always spot on. Here's just a few shots with it outdoors and the fall colors look so vivid and crisp as you can see. Plus tons and tons of detail is captured thanks to that high resolution sensor. The optical telephoto has been given an upgrade as well from 4x to 5x zoom. Now that may not sound like a lot but it hits the perfect sweet spot for when you need just that extra bit of zoom. In comparison, the iPhone 14 Pro comes in with a much more twerpish 3x zoom. Just like the main 50 megapixel lens, the telephoto zoom lens captures amazing imagery with top tier dynamic range. And I was also surprised to see how crisp images looked even at 5 times zoom. And finally, switching to the ultra wide lens allows you to pack in as much scenery as possible. And from my experience, I love that there's close to no noticeable color shift when going from the 1x to the ultra wide 0.5x zoom setting. The ultra wide lens also comes packed with an awesome new feature that will make 
make macro photographers quite happy. Using its autofocus system, the ultra wide sensor will automatically switch when it detects an object that's up close. You can now focus from within inches of an object so you can get really close up shots of things like bugs or plants for example. I just love the fact that it's automatic and happens within seconds. There's no input needed from you. The lens simply knows and will auto switch so that you are ready to take some close up shots. Night mode images are as well very good with the night sight mode being able to take six second long exposures, allowing the lens to capture in a ton of light within that time and it makes darker images look a little more true to life and be able to be much more brighter. Take a look at some of these night shots. They are crisp and bright. However, I have encountered a few issues with flaring. Look at this shot with the street lamp. Do you see how the light wasn't captured properly and looks like it's flaring? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about and on the surface, it really is a minuscule nitpick but during nighttime or in dimly lit scenarios, be weary of light sources like a car's headlamp or perhaps street lamps if they happen to be closer to the camera. It's a shame the flaring comes up at times as it's so pronounced and it definitely does ruin the images in my opinion. Now I did promise I discussed battery and it does provide all day use. I'm just in the camp with mostly all other people and saying that it could be better. Don't get me wrong, it's good, it's certainly gonna last you all day, but I just wish it could have added another 2 or 3 hours of use, but you know how we do it on the Juan and Only. I do plan to publish my first ever Google battery drain test very very soon. Basically what I'm trying to say is that battery life is not problematic, it can just be better and that's mainly why I want to perform a drain test on the Google phones. To see how the new Google Pixel 7 Pro compares to the regular Pixel 7, the 6a and heck we'll even throw in the Pixel 6 Pro from last year while we're at it as well. So in the end, what are my thoughts? I mean, there's very little here I do not like. It's a very refined and solid phone with tweaks to a working formula that makes this phone a formidable option. Sure, it didn't come with the fanfare the Pixel 6 Pro came with, but who cares? The Pixel 6 Pro was and still is a very amazing phone, and the Pixel 7 Pro only expands on it by adding useful software features and a small refinement to the design that I think makes the phone look better anyway. It makes enough small tweaks across the board that makes it a viable option within the flagship smartphone space, but needless to say, if you already have the Pixel 6 Pro, there is basically no reason to upgrade here given it's your standard S spec upgrade with a few refinements. But if you are using an older Pixel phone, or any older Android phone for that matter, it will certainly be a very nice upgrade for you. But what do you think about the all new Pixel 7 Pro? Do you think it's the king of Android phones? or do you happen to have your eyes set on something else? As always guys, let me know in the comment section below. Be on the lookout for my first ever Google phone battery drain test. And with that, I'm clocking out for now, but I cannot wait to catch you all in my next video.